have evidence that both central and obstructive sleep apnea increase mortality risk in patients with heart failure. But what we don't have is evidence that treating those two disorders will improve mortality in heart failure. So our trial, the ADVENT HF trial, is designed to, to uh, answer the question, does treating either central or obstructive sleep apnea in patients with heart failure and a low ejection fraction improve cardiovascular outcomes, specifically the combination of mortality, uh, cardiovascular hospitalizations, and new onset atrial fibrillation. Uh, to do that, patients have an ejection fraction less than 45%, undergo a sleep study. If they have an apnea hypopnea index of greater than 15, meaning they have moderate to severe sleep apnea, are then subdivided into those with obstructive and those with predominantly central apnea and get randomized to a control group who receives no therapy for their uh, apnea and a group who receives the adaptive servoventilation device that we're using to treat both their obstructive and central apnea. They're then followed up at six monthly intervals uh, for the primary and secondary outcomes. The secondary outcomes include quality of life, um, epward sleepiness score, six minute walking distance, brain natriuretic peptide uh, level, and indices of cardiac function determined by uh, echocardiography. At the moment, we have um, 603 patients randomized into the trial. Uh, we're looking to get over 800, and we should be there by the end of next year. Basically, what we're finding is our, our trial seems to have better compliance than previous trials of similar patients. On average, uh, patients with central apnea are using our device uh, 5.2 hours per night over a, a one-year period. The ones with obstructive apnea use a little bit less, 4.6 hours at one month and 4.1 hours at, uh, at uh, one year. However, this represents much better compliance than the other trials that have looked into this area, so we're quite happy about that. In addition to that, 17% of the patients randomized ASV have stopped using it um, compared to 29% in the SERV trial, whereas only 3% have uh, crossed over from the control group to ASV compared to 16% in the SERV trial, indicating that our, 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 our trial has much better compliance with the device that we're using. We've published the protocol. Uh, we published a paper on uh, left atrial function uh, at baseline. Uh, we've submitted a paper on the compliance data, but none of those has any outcomes data in it because we're, we're blind to that. In terms of our trial, we really can't say because we don't know what the outcomes are. All we can say is that you know, this device is well tolerated. It seems to be better tolerated than the device that we used in the SERV trial. Why that is, we're not quite sure. Um, so we really won't be able to say much until the trial is finished, I'm afraid. The only thing we can say, though, is that the Data and Safety Monitoring Committee has looked at the data, as I mentioned. They've looked at it every six months. That was Clean Institutes of Health Research de de demanded that. And it's a good thing they did because when the SERV results came out, if we hadn't done that, we would have no evidence that the patients were safe. But because we did, the Data and Safety Monitoring Committee said to us, the patients are safe, they can continue. So from that point of view, we know that the patients, quote, are not at great risk of harm from the device.